All right, I think today we're ready to complete our gear. Um, the only thing that it needs now is to have the holes put in it to match this configuration. We have a pivot hole right here. I believe that's what it is, or a hole that holds uh, uh, the, the two split ends here. And there's two um, threaded holes over here, and we have a little slot here, and we have a ring cut here. I'm not sure about the ring cut or the slot, whether those were added on extra, extra or whatever. I do know that these are balancing holes that uh, were, were put in to compensate for the attachment that bolts to the gear and the spindle. Anyway, we want to put those holes in this blank. Everything else we're happy with. We're happy with the matching up, even happy with how it feels manual. I mean, it's not going to be the same as once it's rolling under uh, on a spindle and under its own pressure and uh, would see how that repair actually come about and I basically did that to show you how I would go about it um, now as far as teeth being cut um, I used the, the cutter because I had it set up for this right here but you could actually take and hand grind the involute shape um, for a gear tooth and you could single point it basically with a fly cutter uh, of course you'd set it up so that everything was perfect uh, per perfectly centered squared and all that and you can come in and you could you could um, hack away and and create a real nice gear I there has been a lot of times where I have used a lot of other things other than a gear cutter to cut a gear tooth depend on the accuracy and the need for it sometimes down in the gear train to uh, in the back where you're just wanting a gear that accidentally got broke <clears throat> and it's and it's a feed gear you're not gonna you're not gonna have to have the accuracy as if it was right on the spindle because it's so far down the gear train and it's such a slow motion right there that basically the the tooth uh, difference is just non noticeable all right what I want to do first is I want to I want to gain center. I would like to know center of the index head. Sometimes I have the jaws open. I reach down in, and I can I can dial in this bore. This bore may be within a couple thousands of the 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 diameter or the axis that the jaws actually crimp down on. So you always want to make sure that you check that if you want to really fine tune. There's nothing better than actually dialing right on your part, but. I got teeth going around the outside and I have a keyway on the inside so I'm just gonna pick a ring that I'm, I'm happy with the ring or the diameter here this happens to be the ring that we pressed into the um, aluminum cooler job and I like how true it it, it measures all the way around and I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it to actually locate center on this job here so we go ahead and we just lightly snug that up and this is an oldie but goodie and I really do like this. I, I use several different methods to, to hold indicators and stuff like that. But this just happens to be one of my all favorite kinds because sometimes you can put this on here and you don't have to worry about raising and lowering your, uh, your setup or whatever. And, and uh, you can hold just about any indicator you want in the end of it. I really favor this, uh, this little stare at button head at times. So after I just like stick it in there I go ahead and adjust it a little bit bring it out alright so what this does is this gives me a quickie eyeball just to go ahead and give a visual there then you can bring it down close if you want to and you can come around and you can realize that you're a little close there that looks a little better we're close over here we're a little bit farther over there um, then you can push it out finally to where you can get some good pressure on your indicator. You tighten down so it doesn't flex so much. Bring it on in here. Now if you want, you can rotate this a little bit more so in line. You can bring it out a little bit so it tilts up. Okay, then you can bring it in here wherever you want and then you can read it as it's going making sure that you're not hitting any of your jaws in there and you're not extending all the way past any one travel 
All right, that's looking good. You can rotate this around if you want. When you're dialing something zero, um, it, it doesn't really matter what number you actually have it on as long as when you go all the way around it stays on that number. That's zero in relationship to the spot one side to the other side. Okay, we got plus and we're on a minus there. That was plus five. We're plus five. We're going ahead and return it. We get plus five there. And I'll, I'll just look over here. And we're like plus six, plus six, plus four. Okay, now we're that close. We're within a thousandth of, of all the way around. Then I go ahead and I tighten up the knee uh, because each of these joints of the machine itself on an old dog like this um, they're loose and you're hanging loose and so you crimp them and tighten them on up and and you bring it on up and what you end up doing is you end up moving a little bit whereas it was uh, um, plus five we're at uh, we're at zero now see that that the knee and tightening everything up actually pivoted everything up this way here all right so we're minus one there plus two we're plus 10 now and plus five all right so just back and forth we're just going to take this first and we'll come back here so we got uh, plus five plus five we're happy there there's like plus four and plus six all right okay I'm happy right there I, I'm gonna call that zero on our location there so I can go ahead and plug that in here so that if I have to come back to that and refigure anything I can that's just a that's a simple old timer I don't know if they still manufacture these I I'm not up I I've had two I gave one away um, you know you can only use one at a time and see now I only have one mill one spindle and I by myself I, I gave my other one to a buddy over in uh, in Hyannis alright and we'll go put this away and we'll come back and go ahead and swap out this ring for our gear okay we're gonna go ahead and actually we're gonna we're gonna tighten down on the brake there now that we got the handle and everything else in our right position that we want to operate that with um, we got a ring over here to the side all right now we're gonna we're gonna clamp down on the gear here and we're gonna put the other one on the top of it and we're gonna locate in a straight line out our first hole which is going to be that hole there and we want to turn this over put that in a general area there now before we get this going to where we, where we want to move this and clamp this down I like to take some banding material and I like to put a piece in here you ever had a chuck where you you tighten down on the chuck and, and it's on your finished part and your chuck jaws put little indications or little squeeze uh, indents and uh, you you create a little blem on your part well by taking strapping material make sure that you're cutting the same piece of strapping material the tolerances are pretty good on strapping material so I know that this thickness this thickness and this thickness are all you know less than anything that I care to measure okay so they uh, they can stay right in there like that um, if you're going to be doing a lot of rotating and stuff like that, you um, you could put some sticky, uh, some monkey shit or something like that on the back side of them, squeeze them in there and it'll help hold them. And especially if you're going to do a lot of in and out uh, type operations with parts, you could also do that. And, and the spring steel of the strapping material really does help spread out the load and not cause any jaw indentations on any of your finished parts all right with that said we're going to loosen it up so that we can we can rotate this slightly we've taken our slug with the gear milled into it or the uh the keyway milled into it and we're sliding it in we put the piece of tape on there so it wouldn't fall through because uh we, we've already had the thing fall in there and uh, it 
it's not it's not the funnest thing to go in and out dig on okay we're located in there it does have a little bit this is a brooch guide so it has a little bit of play in there so we're going to be picking the happy medium in here but by having uh, center line of, of the whole index head and coming over we're going to be able to pick the motion of this but pick center of that and then after that then we'll be dropping in a pin location from this hole and everything else will be in relationship to that hole so that's how we're going to compensate for the play that we actually have in our brooch uh, guide here uh, and still let it give us a uh, drop in and out checkpoint for each of these hole locations because that's what we're going to once we locate this one then this will stay in put and it won't change and we're going to be changing hole locations for each of the holes that we need to put into it and we're just going to copy what's on here lift it put it there we're going to come over and locate that hole now so we take 5 16 that's the hole size there it fits pretty snug in there and we take a call it we we'll go ahead and we we'll put this in here with a call it well, one, the reason why we do that is because it's, it is uh, the exact size of the hole. It's a good gauge to figure out. Now, we need to know how far over we're going to go to get to that hole, okay? So, we take, we take, uh, pull that plug out. We take this diameter, and that's uh, one and a quarter, one two, 1.250, divide that by two, so we end up with five eighths. So, a center out to here is five eighths. Uh, this diameter right here happens to be 5 eighths, 0.625, and then this hole is 5 sixteenths divided by 2 is um, 1.5625. We add up all that together, we end up having 1 inch 406. About that much to go to the center. Alright, so we go ahead. And we align our piece here. Okay, we still got it floating in here because we haven't tightened it yet because we want to go ahead and we're going to be claiming the best spot for that. Uh, just for eyeballs, we always kind of go like this. There's a little center on the, that little tip there, so we're putting it just a little bit over our 400. That seems to be hanging right over the hole. So there's just a visual of, of helping us uh, confirm our measurement. All right, unlock our table, and from here we're going to use our read out and come over one inch 406 right there uh, if not we would be just setting our dial on the end of the table and using that so this comes down and now at the right rotation that should just go right down in the hole which it does alright and everything is still nice and loose and uh, in here now we can rock our bottom gear there slightly and we're going to lightly tighten up our our chuck here so that we can make sure that it's just rotating slightly and I want to I want to go between the extremes uh, and I'm just doing this by eyeball here because once we once we establish that run it's going to be located in that same exact spot right there okay I'm happy with that now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that 5 16 reamed hole right through here then we'll be able to drop that pin in there and these will for the rest of this duration this will hold the center for clocking it and this right here will be holding it from the plate so every other location that's on here between these two added holes and these four lighting holes for the balance, everything will be exactly the same as this sample. It'll be slightly clocked off of the gear teeth out here because those are only close. In fact, actually when we set it up, it was pretty close to being split in the difference. And the female here is the male here, which it doesn't matter. The, this, nothing is balanced to those teeth and the gear is not timed like a clock piece okay because this is an in and out type of gear that goes for back gear it's not a timed gear okay we put the 
chuck in the spindle now and we've lowered the table down and now that we lowered it down you always want to make should be make sure that you are still able to feel that your hole is exactly center if your head is out of tram and um, you lengthen your stroke and travel you're going to be drifting off of your x and y axis depending on where or how far you are out okay so by doing this checkout you're actually lowering your table and checking out your, your travel of your spindle in a, in a distance out from where you're at and if you are out with any significance it will show up at that time just kind of a quickie uh, self-taught uh, inspection or, or uh, there, there has been occasions where I have untrammed a head and went about doing something and never really trammed it back in just kind of like eyeballed it square and uh, and kind of left it that way uh, usually if you take something out of tram as soon as you move it to go back before you tighten it up for the final you should go ahead and tram it into your table uh, have it ready to go it's kind of a good practice if you're in a shop where you've done that to a machine and uh, and then you're gonna go on to something else you should tram in that uh, and and say hey I tram that in and uh, you check it out for yourself or or whatever and um, and you shouldn't also you shouldn't feel bad if somebody else uh, is checking behind you because that's just good uh, uh, you, you never want to come on to a machine without checking that out yourself if you don't check it it's your fault and really if the guy didn't put it back in there it's his fault and um, the the blame game is not going to get the job done but you checking is just going to take a couple seconds and then there's not an accident and it's not a lost time or a redo especially if you don't have any material uh, I went ahead and I picked up a 64 Thunder size drill bit and we're going to drill down through there and then we're going to go ahead and run the reamer through there and we should have a hole uh, in the location and everything else is kosher so let's go While you're drilling, you could actually hold the vacuum cleaner there and suck up the chips as you go, I guess, if you want to. Alright, so now we've got the hole drilled. The pin won't pass through it yet. We need to make it a ream pass, and then we should be able to have a hole. Okay, that's, that's a little bit off. I'm going to go down just about another eighth of an inch here. And I'm not going to bother checking that because I'm confident in my alignment and we're going to slow some speed down in here because we're going to be going in with the reamer that was fine not real hard material Okay, it's a, it's a tight hole. All right, we're not afraid of tight holes. We'll leave that in there like that. Um, that, that really locks in our location for other holes here. All right, we'll, we'll save the lightning holes for last. We're going to go ahead and go over here, and we're going to come over, and we're going to locate one, but we're going to, this one here, we're going to look at our readout, and we're going to, locate that and then we're going to come over and we're going to take a look at that one there before we actually drill any we want to see if coming over and locating with a quarter inch pin which i believe that's 5 16 so i'm going to check on the thread diameter and um, 257 uh, is is our size drill size for the 5 16 uh, tap there and we'll go ahead and 
and drill and tap those two holes but I want to see if they actually are split off from center and exactly in line um, and then we can go ahead and drill them accordingly okay we put the pin in here my first guess is to come over the distance that this was over here to come over this way here thinking that that would be equal in there but these are out from the center line so that uh, 1 inch 406 actually doesn't look too bad as far as those that opening so we got to crank on over and we're going to take a look at it does go in but it seems like we're rubbing on the front side of it there and that's like 410 off from center let's go over to this other one and take a look at it and that falls almost right in there and that's Four four eighty five. There we go. Four four seventy seven. I'm gonna call it on the width, and it actually looks pretty good as far as the in and out direction there. So they definitely are in two locations and I'm going to I'm going to individually eyeball them on center and drill them. They are real close to being that 406. I got this is 404 on the uh, on the distance out 415 on on there so it's uh real real close. Okay, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to go get a drill and tap. Okay, I checked it out with the tap. The 5 16 18 is the appropriate size. That tap drill size is a, is a, um, a letter F, which is... 257. Sometimes I actually go down with a quarter inch drill bit that's not quite uh, ground right and it kind of pulls a little bit larger hole than the quarter and it's it's usually okay. This here I just happen to have a fairly new letter F drill and that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do this first hole. And we're going to drill it and then we're going to tap it right one one step one right after the other without moving it. Sometimes I want to come in and chamfer or break the edge of that hole so it'll be a nice start. But actually, sometimes that could be more harmful. I do not see any uh, breaking on this edge here, on any of these holes right here. So, being cast, I'm just going to go like this with the little emery afterwards and just take anything that's off of there or lap it. Uh, sometimes you have shouldered items that come into play and uh, they, they need to set against something. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the case that actually has that or not uh, because I didn't take it apart. But I do know that I could mess it up if I do chamfer it. Um, <clears throat> it's better to go ahead and leave it the way it is as per the sample. Okay, now I'm going to tap this. Now I just tighten my um, tap into my all right here real snug um, I make sure that I have enough travel I have more than enough travel on my spindle to absorb that depth there all right and I'm, I'm in line with that hole so I'm not afraid of running my tap in there and I, I, I tap like this quite often 
and I'm just going to go ahead and go through the steps. First I lower down for a relatively safe tap speed and I leave the spindle really free. I'm not going to put any lube on there because this is cast or ductile iron and I'm just going to lightly give it some pressure and then it starts itself. It basically feeds itself down in there and I've got it tight enough and I kind of watch my eye when I get down close to there and I know that I have about a couple three threads and I have enough time to stop it with my hand on the brake. I also look underneath here and I actually can see that I've gone through all of the uh, tap uh, starting and I'm on full thread so the thing is actually already tapped the hole and now we just need to bring it back. So now I reverse it and let it feed all the way back out of the hole and I kind of hold a light pressure backwards on my handle and sometimes it doesn't bring it all the way out but it just stops and I carry my handle here to go ahead and finish removing it if it doesn't want to bring it out backwards. Sometimes if you don't tighten it down enough the pressure going backwards will unscrew the chuck. You know this is a probably a dull tap. Alright we got one hole done and now we're gonna go for the other hole so we've got to put our plate back up here with our slug in here and our hole tight hole put the pin in it All right now we're gonna go and locate our other hole here and it's almost straight across it's just a little bit off that's all a little bit farther out We can rock it back and forth. We know that we're hitting in the center. That's good right there. All right. And give it some speed here. this jaw here but this is hollow on the underside remember it's got this area right here so I'm not going to be going down into that jaw but as soon as I eyeball that I had to look underneath just to make sure Now we're going to be running the tap down in there, but the tap is only going to go a certain length of distance there, and then we're going to have to stop it. And then, then we'll back the tap back out, and then when we get all done with this part and we pull it out, we'll finish running the tap in there. But at least this way here, we get nice, true running starting of the tap into there, so that when we do go for hand mode, we will... Uh, be straight in line with the part we won't have to be forcing it or whatever and uh, so I'm gonna be watching underneath real real close here on this process okay and bring it back out again and I'm actually yeah, I'm about an eighth of an inch of actually touching that jaw. So I did a good job on stopping that. All right, now we got those two holes in there. 
and here's my pin back into the tight hole all right let's um let's measure those holes there these are half inch 480 490 493 494 492 all right we're gonna go grab a drill and then we're gonna come over and we're gonna we're gonna put the drill point down on here and then we're gonna put the drill point down inside there and we're gonna read our depth of what what we're gonna be in difference there um, so we'll probably come over and we'll line up on this one here first because then we can come just directly uh, south of that and touch that surface and then come back into our zero point once we locate it um, and we know what number X and Y location we are there and we'll be able to gauge the depth and then we'll just go one at a time right on over okay I got my spindle in neutral and I brought this down and I got this spinning pretty free and we're not feeling any motion uh, there and I have a little bit of a little bit of rubbing but it sounds to be all the way around the whole outside all right I got that marked on my readout um, because I'm gonna be happy with that whole location now I just need to know what depth I'm gonna have to go with so we're at uh, 0.627 there and we're gonna back up to where we can touch there we're gonna set our depth here so we can compare now this drill point that I have and the drill point down in there um, I didn't put nothing down in there to find exactly what that drill point is <clears throat> they look pretty close by eyeball just glancing in there okay now we come back to our 0.627 here all right that's where we were we're still happy okay now we come all the way down here and we are 320 thousandths on the depth Now just to, just for GP, we'll just take our indicator here and I got 349 right there, 350, 321, 332, 345, 348, alright, and we said 320, and we're just checking this down here, this is like 315, 320, 317, alright, so 320, 320 to 330 would probably be a good guesstimate to compensate for maybe a slight bit of angle difference in the bottom there because we do have about 20 thousandths difference in our diameter. All right, so we are locked down and we are we are in that location right there right now, and we're going to go for that that hole and we're going to take it down to depth, and then we'll set everything back up in place here and we'll zero in and we'll go for the next hole and we're going to do those four holes right alongside there all right up there <clears throat> we're setting that at zero right there we do have to put it in gear and we're going to have to give it a little bit of speed here it's not going to it's not going to do it on that speed all right
I'll be happy with that. Okay, put this back up in here. And get our pin, get back into our tight hole. All right, we'll come on over here and we're gonna be going outward a little bit here. And still looks like a little bit here. Okay, now we're gonna, we're in free mode so we can we can hear it rubbing. Okay, and you can see the flutes are this way right now. That's where the rub noise is, so we gotta go side to side here. And it looks like we weren't out far enough. Okay, now we're, the flute noise is in line this way here. And we stare down, and it looks like we need to go a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy right there. Our zero again. Okay, we're going to do the same for the next two. Okay, here's the last one. We're still touching that zero. Okay, and there is 3.30 on a depth. Alright, I want to do one other thing here. And of course, I'm not going to come in. This was done like in a wheel cutter or slitting saw or whatever. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get... Uh, first off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to see what we got here for a with here and it's like 80,000 so if we can get something like a 330 seconds and 90 thousands or something like that and we're going to come in and we're going to give a, a little bit of a uh, a notch in this area right here I don't know about this ring right here of actually uh, being in there for any reason or if it was an accident um, from whoever tried to braze up a couple teeth on here before might have accidentally came in and touched in that area and I think that is coming around uh, this the the attachment on this to engage the back gear or, or lock the spindle and I I know that this is a machine this is a purposely made little clearance right in between those two holes right here and I want to add that to mine but I'm not going to do it with a wheel cutter I'm just going to come in and do a little spot with an end mill um, because it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, it's just like 13,000 deep. 
and um, so I want to go ahead and throw that in there and I think it's just because whatever works in this right area right here they want to make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't rub or mushroom into that area there um, I haven't got that all figured out but I just I, I, I think it's an important part just like these are balancing holes for the whole thing I just want when you get this thing spinning up when you get your lathe spinning up you ever had something offset in your chuck a four jaw or whatever and you get the load offset you're you're gonna shake and rattle and roll and if you don't do this then this attachment that goes on here is gonna cause without doing that you will cause it to shake rattle and roll that is a lot of material to be taken off of one side of the gear okay I came over here to this side I got my this is just a tap, tap follower and I use it for a pointer a lot of time I am zero set to my center right there and I'm eyeballing it and actually <clears throat> that groove is just slightly off of being centered not not very much I mean very very slight bit um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave leave zero considered right there now I <clears throat> I want to go ahead and I want to spot right there so I'm gonna mark that zero and I'm gonna come out here and I know that we're we were out here somewhat uh, in this area right here because um, the sweep I could see up here and then where it starts to sweep up over here so I think just about there is going to be the end of the radius so that's like 0.58 we'll just come back to 0.5 so we're going to make one half inch long and we found a little tiny 330 seconds in mill this is carbide this is a center cutting for flute. Little tiny thing, okay? Now, I'm I'm not gonna. Let's see. Do I? The normal practice would be to go ahead and run this in a collet. There you go. Okay, so I can put this collet in here and bring this on down. Um, I I just wanna. Let's go ahead, and I don't even know how true this Albright is. I haven't done this in a long time. I mean, when I first got it, I, I did check it out. But And everybody wants to know, hey, can you end mill in a chuck? Is it advisable? No, it is not advisable. I do not think it's good practice. Can you get away with it? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. What does this look like? It looks pretty gone true I'm tempted to give that attempt uh, a, a try okay but if it does snap do I have another one I don't know I didn't I didn't look and see if I had another one uh, if it does snap uh, it, it's gonna you know it, it stands a chance on leaving a pecker mark on your on your job I've got a lot invested in Tyrell's gear here so I'm gonna change out and I'm gonna put my collet in here I'm not gonna give it a chance everybody's gonna make up their own mind where that line is to draw on um, practices as far as holding uh, end mills and things like that <clears throat> if I was gonna come in and I was gonna put a square bottom into a bore already drilled if I was gonna or radius end mill uh, to put a ball um, seat into uh, an existing hole I would go ahead and use the drill chuck but where you got a milling operation with a small end mill I want to make sure that I'm holding that thing dead nuts on the table here because I also want to choke down on all of my motion there um, before I've already got this marked so before I go any farther and I, I don't want to hurt myself you know mean slam myself against that end mill in there trying to get this out all right now I can go ahead and I can set zero as far as that top surface there. All I all I need to do is break the surface 
they had uh, 10 or 13. What did we say? I think we said 13, but oh, let's turn this thing on. About 16,000, 15, 16,000. All we want to do is just create a, a little bit of a valley there that's between these two holes right here because of that pivot, I guess the pivot action or whatever's going to go in those, uh, they, they want to keep it from rubbing or building an area there or shouldering it out or some kind of relief, chip clearance, it could be anything. Um, so, alright, I believe my speed is uh, up to par. I'm engaging, I'm engaging my spindle feed there and we'll back this up just so it's not on the surface all right we're going to come down and we're going to touch all right we're coming down and we're going to touch and there's zero our zero is right on the dial all right and this is a center cutting so we should be able to go ahead and just crank it right on down There's 15 thousands on the depth. Now we're just gonna feed this by hand back to our zero mark. It's going smooth enough, so we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of auto feed here. blow it off so I could see in there but I'd rather vacuum the chips instead of having those small chips go down into the ways area of the knee so we got 125 more to go down to 80 70 60 50 40 30 20 10 and last couple right right there that puts it at half okay I'll we'll crank back out of here I got what I wanted there. I didn't break that and I didn't take any chances. It cost me, oh, I don't know, what did it take me? About two minutes uh, to even explain my reason for not. And you know, and you can just drop drop your call it, crank and let the table come on up or whatever. Um, the <laughs> the time that you think you're saving by letting a foolish trick like running an end mill in your drill truck, no matter how true or how great you think it works you're extending the spindle out farther and farther and farther and you're trying to cut something especially when you got carbide carbide is brittle it does not like to to move around all right i think we're ready to take it out and uh, go do a lap on, on the uh, sandpaper and compare it to the other one there and i think we're ready to go uh braise up his arm uh, for the other gear train and uh, we'll get them wrapped up here today.